she had perhaps the greatest launch of any of the 2020 candidates. Mm -hmm. She is not somebody who the Republicans should underestimate because right. she has the ability, I believe, to communicate and to do so, uh, you know, very well in terms of hitting her marks, saying her lines, doing what is needed As we in order saw. to achieve yeah. the kind of, of response that she wants. Well, let's. Right, so her problems begin when people get to know her. And right now, she's just operating under scripted circumstances, and her handlers will probably try to keep her on script as much as possible. And the problems that uh, have inevitably popped up with Kamala Harris is when people are around her for a significant length of time, and then the flaws start uh, kicking in. So Chris Whipple wrote a 2023 book about the Biden administration, The Fight of His Life Inside Joe Biden's White House. And he talks about why did Joe Biden select Kamala Harris, right? He needed a person of color and a woman. So he'd made justice for communities of color a central campaign promise. So Kamala Harris was not the best vice presidential pick overall for Joe Biden, the most qualified. She was the, the best pick among women of color. And uh, when she took over the office of, of vice president, she kept making mistakes and most of her wounds were self-inflicted, right? She had an inability to find her own voice because she's so insecure, right? She was confident and effective as a senator when she was skillfully interrogating witnesses in televised hearings with uh, prepared remarks, but she seemed awkward and uncertain as vice president when she wasn't able to operate from a script. And so that's why you get her laughing inappropriately and chopping the air inappropriately with her hands. She seemed condescending. She seemed insecure. She didn't seem in reality. And so uh, Politico, fairly early on, published an article portraying her office as a poisonous snake pit. Right? The vice president's shop was suffering from low morale, porous lines of communication, diminished trust among aides and senior officials. Why was there so much distrust? Because Kamala Harris couldn't handle her own anxiety and insecurity, and she would just offload that onto her aides. Right? She was described as abusive. People are thrown under the bus. It all starts from the top. They have plummeting office morale causing an exodus of personnel. She's unable to keep staff. Washington Post then reported a Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris staff exodus, reignites questions about her leadership role and her future ambitions. And people who've worked with her for long consistently report a tremendous amount of dysfunction, that Kamala Harris will fail to do her homework before events. She'll be refused to be prepped by her staff, and then she will blame them when she comes off as ill-prepared. Right? The amount of stress that she creates by constantly being impossible to manage and then taking out all her stress on staff, usually women or people who are in not great positions of authority, it was unbearable. So the number one person the news media turns to for negative assessments of Kamala Harris is Gil Duran, who was Kamala Harris's senior advisor and communications director when she was California's attorney general in 2013. And so the last straw for him was when Kamala Harris failed to show up for several scheduled prep meetings she could not be reached by phone before a televised event in Los Angeles. When she finally arrived, she gave him a profane tongue lashing and reduced a female staffer to tears. After five months on the job, he resigned. Now, you could dismiss Gil Duran as just one disgruntled aide who'd served Kamala Harris for only five months, but he had company. Now, the staffer who worked for her for years insisted on anonymity, said that uh, Kamala Harris engaged in unnecessary gamesmanship driven by deep, deep insecurities. Right. She refused to do the preparation that you need to do before going public on hardcore policy matters. Then she would become incensed and outraged when things wouldn't go the way she thought they were supposed to go. There was a lot of magical thinking. So I, I also notice this among people who are insecure. They have this imaginary world where everything's going to be okay and they are not thrown back on their own resources. Right. There's now a generation of staff people who simply won't put up with this abuse. They leave, they tweet, they leak. Whenever somebody raises an issue about Kamala, everybody's like, oh, you don't want to see black women succeed. That's completely backward. Everybody goes to work for Kamala Harris. By definition, wants to see her succeed. That's why you take these jobs. Her staff dysfunction is not new. In her office as vice president, it will inhibit any administration that she leads. Her staff seems to be in a constant state of upheaval. 